Well, welcome back to part two of the installation of an upgraded fuel tank in a Challenger 2. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you might learn something. And uh, please uh, like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Hey, uh, welcome back again, everybody, to the continuing saga of me rebuilding this Challenger aircraft. Uh, a couple things have happened. I had to remove the engine. Well, I didn't have to. I chose to remove the engine because after I get the fuel tank installed, I'm going to be working on the fuel system, and that means electric fuel pump and all there's a, other things I'm putting in, in place as well, and you'll see. And I needed to get access to that backside of the fuel tank, and with the engine in place, it was really tough because you had to kind of twist your arms. Uh, so I figured, okay, I got to remove the engine anyways because it needs to be torn down. Um, all the seals need to be replaced, the bearings need to be inspected. Uh, it was fogged, but I just want to make sure there's no corrosion. If there's any corrosion on the bearings, well, then uh, it's a game changer for the engine. Uh, but if there's no corrosion, there's only about 130 yards on the engine. Uh, the compression is good. I did check the compression. Compression is very good. So top end is okay. It's just got to check the bearings. And I got to replace the engine seals, that kind of stuff, because uh, it's been sitting too long. And here it is, by the way. The engine is sitting here on its sideways. Here, this is actually what it looks like in real life. That's the, the top of the engine. But there, it's on a bench. Did you guys get seasick? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so here's the engine sitting here waiting to get torn down. Got to finish disassembling it. And of course, there we go. Ta-da! No engine. Okay, so I removed the fuel tank again. And, uh, oh, let's, ring, let's put this away, just out of the way. So the fuel tank installation will be completed today. Uh, it'll be fastened in place, and the goal today is to, again, get the fuel tank installed, including the fill attachment, and finished, done. It will not be removed after this. This is the final bolting down of the fuel tank. So anything I need to strap down, like wiring, what have you, has to be done now in order to uh, to facilitate that. Uh, that metal plate down there, uh, which is where the transponder antenna is going to be connected through, I need to install the transponder antenna and route that coax to the front so I can connect it up to that Garmin transponder. And likewise, I've got to cut the other large hole out down there, that large hole, so that the sump point for checking for water will protrude down. Hopefully, I've got the hole in the right spot. I don't know. I may have gooped. Who knows? So that's the goal today. Um, and uh, so follow along. Fuel tank installation, which includes also the installation of the transponder antenna, will be finished today. How much farther I get after that with further work, we'll see. So, um, yeah, thanks for following along. I do appreciate it. And um, like uh, Mike Petty says, back to work.
working blind by feel only. Can't really have my head on this side, because, or maybe I can. Oh, yeah, I can, I can reach that. So I'm putting a wrench on the bottom, and now the socket, the socket on the top to tighten this down. Ponder antenna is in place. Yay! One more thing on the checkbox. Now I'm just going to cut the hole for the. Uh, oh. Now I'm going to cut the hole for the uh, sump point because gotta have a hole. All right. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, it was my uh, neighbor who was taxiing in. Had to go say hello. You know how it is at an airport. Hangar doors open. Come on and visit. Okay, where was I? I was wrapping. There it is. Teflon tape. You just have to make sure that you don't get any Teflon tape that'll go into the hole, otherwise it'll get into the fuel stream and plug something up. So um, uh, between uh, four to six, seven wraps, around that range. I think I put six wraps on here. Time to get a wrench. A few moments later. I think this one will fit. What follows is a brief construction montage. And that's my cue for the narration. Now, of course, I stick the tank in there and then I realize nope, nope, can't do that yet. <laughs> I'm going to put the coax onto that transponder antenna because once that tank is in place, routing that coax and fastening it to that transponder antenna will be virtually impossible because it'll be underneath the tank and uh, almost impossible to get at. So uh, I wisely chose to route the coax now and I'm going to be fastening it to the longeron and keeping it away from cables and pulleys and anything else that could... Uh, possibly <laughs> rub against the coax and damage the coax or that the coax might interfere with uh, operations of the aircraft. So it'll be um, strapped down um, against the longeron and uh, I only put one BNC connector on it when I made this uh, cable, uh, the part that went onto the antenna. The other half, um, when I strung it out, I measured it and then I cut it and now I'm in installing the uh, the second BNC connector at the other end. Uh, I do this all the time. Uh, this is very easy for me to do. Some of you guys might have to purchase pre-made cables. Um, you know, that, that's okay. Just, you know, make sure you measure it properly and, and whatnot. But um, I don't. I, I make all my own cables and uh, that way I can get it to custom length to exactly the length that I want. Uh, and um, There we go. I'm just kind of showing you a little close-up. There's a, my crimp tool I use for crimping the um, uh, the connections on there. These these are crimp on BNC connectors. They don't require any soldering. Uh, this crimp tool, uh, which is a little expensive, uh, it, uh, it makes a very very tight connection and you'll see right there I'm going to tug on it a bit and give a thumbs up. There we go. They almost didn't see the thumbs up. And now the tank goes back in and that kind of ends this brief construction montage.
We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. Okay, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but this is what it looks like from the back side. You can see there, you just see outlet for the fuel, and there's the, here's the um, sump valve. But the problem here, let's get down underneath. Oh, sorry about the bad camera work. The problem here is that this is right up against the back side of this hole that I made. I, I, if I had to move the hole back about half a centimeter, it would have been perfect. So I need to make this hole a little bit larger or move, you know, make a little cut back here. Anyways, yeah, I got I to do that. I don't want... I don't want this tube rubbing on that aluminum plate because uh, it's going to cut it and then I'm going to drain all the fuel out while I'm flying. So it, it, it can't touch any, any metal piece. If it does, it's going to just wear and that's a bad thing. So now I've got to stand up over here and do that in order to... Oh, God, everybody... Huh, are you all seasick yet? <laughs> okay, so in order to get that hole in the right position or make it a little bit longer or oblong, I figure I'm just going to use my uh, Greenlee punch set. Now this is what I use for punching holes in uh, cabinets, that kind of stuff for electrical. So it will suffice. I've got more than enough sizes. To, uh, to handle what I need. I'd probably use this die here and uh, make the hole a little bit longer and oblong and well, I'll show you when it's done. Uh, it's going to be difficult doing it while holding the camera so I'm going to uh, just do it and then I'll show you what I've done. So Be right back. fits nicely. Okay. Kind of roughly estimating where to drill the holes. And I do believe this was the last time I had to remove the tank. Now you notice I've got the rad angle drill attachment uh, to drill the holes that I marked. And um, I had to use that because I couldn't get in there with a regular size drill bit, like a regular straight drill bit. So I used the right angle to drill the hole. Now the hole is going to go right through the tube, but the drill bit is not long enough for the right angle. So I'm going to switch to a regular drill bit and slide it into the hole that I made with the right angle and kind of squeeze it against the cloth and push back and there you go. I can uh, I can actually drill the holes out uh, uh, there. So again, that right angle drill attachment is uh, a vital tool for the installation of this tank. And um, yeah, uh, without that I don't think I could have um, I could have installed this tank. Oh, there we go. Another very, very important tool and you're going to use it a lot is vacuum. A shop vac. Um, keep up with it. You don't want little tiny pieces of metal, especially sharp uh, drilled pieces of metal, getting in between uh, the the fabric and uh, and and your uh, your longerons or what have you, because they're just going to wear holes into the fabric and deteriorate your uh, uh, your coverings too soon.
Okay, this is probably the single hardest part of installing the tank, it is to install those um, the sight tube. The, uh, the, the plastic tube that goes along the side of the tank tells you how much fuel you've got in it. Now I'm, I'm going to be installing uh, a fuel probe uh, and, and a fuel gauge, but I'm still going to have a sight tube, you know, just in case, and also when I'm filling up I can see what the level is. But this took, in reality, two hours to, put, to get those sight tubes in there, trying to figure out how to tighten them down properly because there's nowhere to put a wrench there. The bottom tube is just a simple right angle. The top is a T because it not only is part of the sight tube, the top tube is your vent for your tank. So you've got a uh, pipe coming out of the top of that. Uh, that goes much higher to vent into the tank. So I'm not going to show you all that. I'm just going to let you know that it's a two-hour process, and if you're going to be installing this tank, be prepared for that and have as many different types and styles of wrenches that you've got, because you are going to need it. And this is where I'm going to stop the video because I promised I'd make them 15 to 20 minutes long. And this is already getting close to that. So tune in next week for another episode where I continue on with the installation of the tank. And it gets really interesting. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, glad you're following along. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.